When we return, we'll discover the truth about the effect of astrology on the early course of the war. One persistent legend about Hitler and the occult can certainly be discarded. No evidence exists that Hitler ever consulted an astrologer. Indeed, he actively discouraged all prophets except himself. However, one astrologer, a shadowy figure named Karl Kraft, became pivotal in one of the most mysterious series of events in World War II. Heute. On November 2nd, 1939, Kraft predicted that Hitler's life would soon be threatened by an explosion. Six days later, a powerful bomb planted by a would-be assassin shattered the platform Hitler had left only minutes before. Providence, Hitler claimed, had again protected him. Kraft's successful prediction enhanced his reputation and won him the devoted support of a powerful Nazi already deeply enmeshed in mysticism, Deputy Führer Rudolf Hess. The degree to which Kraft and other astrologers influenced Hess would become an issue of national urgency a year and a half later. In the spring of 1941, Nazi Germany ruled most of Western Europe and was at war with only one nation, Great Britain. For reasons that are still mysterious, Rudolf Hess had become persuaded that he alone could talk the British into a peace treaty. A qualified pilot, he embarked on a bizarre, perilous solo flight across the North Sea on May 10, 1941. On that day, Six planets were in line with a full moon, an astrological event that Hess believed favored his mission to Great Britain. Historians agree almost unanimously that Hitler was unaware of Hess's plan. The deputy Fuhrer, wearing a variety of occult symbols, parachuted into Scotland. He was captured and became World War II's most famous prisoner of war. Hitler repudiated Hess, claiming his former deputy had been driven crazy by astrologers and fortune tellers. He uh, certainly said that the, uh, the man had gone mad. Now Hess, because of his connection with uh, astrologers, they were rounded up and supposedly questioned to find out which one of them may have given the, uh, Hess the appropriate date. But British intelligence, perhaps because of Hesse's astrological obsession, was mistakenly convinced Hitler was also devoted to astrology. They were therefore pleased when a European refugee named Louis de Vaul appeared and claimed he was in contact with Hitler's so-called favorite astrologer, the same Karl Kraft, who had predicted Hitler's close call in 1939. When further investigation revealed de Vol was not in touch with Croft, the British recouped their investment by finding him another, more useful task. De Vol created 50 bogus prophecies and attributed them to the famous 16th century astrologer Nostradamus. De Vol worked on some Nostradamus predictions and what he did in particular was he produced these booklets that, that looked like they'd been legitimately published within Germany and predicting bad things both for Germany and uh, for Hitler. 
The literature was later dropped over Germany where, unlike Hitler, many people devoutly believed in astrology. Undermining German morale with phony astrological predictions of defeat may have been an effort worth making. But ultimately, wars are won by massive deployment of force and by combat bravery. In the spring of 1945, the Nazi Empire was collapsing as the Allies and Russians closed in for the kill. When we continue, the final desperate months when Hitler's occult conviction turned against those who had adored and sacrificed for him, the people of Germany. As the tide of war turned against Germany, Hitler, once the central figure of German life, was rarely seen in public. What was he going to do? Show himself in the bombed cities? That wasn't going to encourage his popularity uh, very much. Hitler used to draw his uh, power and strength from his audience, but of course he could no longer do that when things started going against Germany and uh, it appeared that his uh, magnetism, if you could use that word, started to drain away from him. In January of 1945, as his world crumbled around him, Hitler retreated underground to his Berlin bunker. Here he prepared a final plan, the destruction of Germany the country he had cherished all his life. He ordered the demolition of all factories, power plants, bridges, railways, communication facilities, and all clothing and food supplies. In his last months, he sometimes said, that if the Germans are not able to win they deserve to disappear. It's clear that he did not want Germany to go through the humiliation of surrender and preferred to see them destroyed. If they could not be the new race of supermen that he had predicted they would be, then they deserved to die. Part of the occult is that it usually ends in apocalypse. There is an end scene. Now Hitler was obsessed by that. Everything he did was final because he was obsessed with this apocalyptic idea that in the end there would be either a great a glorious apotheosis or everything would go down in flames. That's very much part of the occult. And so everything went down in flames. On April 29th, Hitler gave a clear signal that his mission was nearing its end. He married his mistress, Eva Braun. Hitler always regarded himself as a symbol. He was the symbol of Germany and he acted as a symbol. A symbol can't very well be married. The next day, Eva and Hitler retired to the bunker's private suite and committed suicide to the sound of Russian bombardment. The date of Hitler's death has a sinister occult significance. It's believed by some people that he chose April 30th deliberately because it coincided with Walpurgis Night, which is believed to be the most important date in Satanism. So, According to one commentator, he was giving himself up to the powers of darkness. <laughs>